Hello YouTube, welcome back to the Loose Transistor channel. I am your host Lucas and I'm bringing to you guys today a brand new build and review series on a prototype three inch Detroit multi-rotor called the WP-17. If you're familiar with the channel, I did a uh, previous build on another WP-17 prototype from Detroit multi-rotor and it was the five inch, this guy over here. So if you want to, you can check out on the side. I will put a link for the other playlist. And today we're gonna be going over the parts that they sent me for the Detroit for the frame, and as well as the parts as I selected to make this build happen. Um, we will be going over. We will won't be going over the build of the frame itself. That'll be in the next episode where I'm actually gonna build it and dry fit the parts so we can see how much wire we need to cut for everything there. So I'm just gonna move the camera down so you guys can see what I'm showing over here and get a better view of the parts. All right guys, so I have all the parts that are gonna be going on this build neatly laid out on the desk over here. And we're gonna start by going over the frame. So the frame, um, some of the parts of it are very similar to the five inch frame, especially the top plate. I'm pretty sure that the top plate is exactly the same one as the five inch frame. So the quality of the carbon fiber is actually quite good and it actually came better machined than the last time. Last time I had a lot of little burrs and uh, the, the edges were very sharp and this time they're not as sharp. So maybe they changed the drill bit on their CNC machine and it's better now. But I'm sure when they come out with the full production spec uh, frame, it will be finished nicely because I have seen their other frames and they are done quite well. Um, the base plate comes with, a, instead of coming with a, two carbon fiber bits, it has, a, I think this is fiberglass just to say, or PCB material, but uh, it is dielectric so it won't, you won't have to worry about uh, having to shield the PDB from the frame because we all know that carbon fiber conducts electricity and that could be really bad. Another feature of this frame that is similar to the five inch is the removable antenna hold on the back right here. I actually quite like this feature. Uh, I've been flying it on the five inch for a little while now and uh, it's actually quite handy to be able to just pop this off and then pop everything out without having to worry about your antenna and uh, it seems to be quite resilient. I've crashed it a few times on the five inch frame and they haven't broken it yet. I actually haven't broken anything on it yet, which is quite impressive. Uh, the cutest part of this frame, of course, is the little arms for the three inch build. And as you can see here, they're all removable. Uh, they're quite well finished. They look quite nice and they actually look quite sturdy. I believe that this is about four millimeters thick. Let me just pull out the calipers and I'll confirm. Actually, no, it's a uh, 2.5, 2.5 millimeters, but it's so short. I think that even at 2.5 will be fine. It'll be pretty strong and I don't see us breaking this anytime soon. <clears throat> the frame also came with some 3D printed TPU parts that help finish off the build, including uh, this camera guard over here that uh, just protects the lens, especially if you're running some aggressive camera angles. And I actually quite like that feature. It's it's a different form of TPU than I'm used to. It's, it's pretty flexible, but it feels pretty hard as well. So I think it'll be, uh, I think it'll, it'll last. The camera mount is actually quite simple as well and it's also 3D printed from the same material and it's basically just going to go on each side of the camera and it allows you to move the camera back and forth and adjust the position of the lens. So um, you might have to push it a little bit further forward to get the full angle if you're looking for something over 45 degrees. Now it also came with this uh, back plate for the, I think you can mount LEDs or you can use it to hold your VTX in place, depending on how tight your build is. For this one here, we have, uh, we're gonna be using the Innova VTX, but we'll talk about that in just a little bit. So that pretty much covers it for the frame. There's not too many parts here. It came with a full set of hardware using uh, M3 screws and M3 nuts and uh, some, some nylon, uh, sorry, some aluminum stands. Uh, pretty standard stuff, nothing too crazy there, but it looks like good quality, well finished. The brains of the three inch build are is going to be powered by the Pico BLX by Furious FPV. Uh, if you're familiar with the channel, I've already done a build with this one when I built the Doinker. So this little guy right here. So we're going to be using the exact same um, flight controller on the three inch build. Uh, having flown the Doinker and built the Doinker, I find this, this FC to be quite impressive. Uh, it's so small, it's only a 20 by 20 millimeter board. It is a full PDB as well as a full flight controller. Um, supposedly able to handle anywhere from 2 to 6S, which is quite impressive for something this small. Uh, I haven't run anything over 3S on this yet. The three inch build is gonna be a 4S build. So we'll be pushing the limits a little bit, but I'm sure this is gonna be absolutely fine. Um, this board is a full F3 chip and I'm able to, to run eight kilohertz, two kilohertz um, PID loops on it, which is quite good for tuning I found. 
Now, another thing from Furious FPV that I'm going to be using on this build is the Innova VTX, which is built specifically to pair with the B Pico BLX. So there's pin headers over here at the top that'll mate perfectly with the Pico BLX, and I won't have to worry about anything other than wiring the camera. Uh, it also has a micro UFL antenna out on the, this area right here, and it comes with a um, SMA, sorry, RP SMA connector with the micro UFL bottom, and uh, should make it very easy for you to just attach it and go. And if you if you break anything, you can just replace it very easily. Uh, I have not used this uh, VTX before, so I'm pretty curious to see how it works. Uh, I also uh, I also forgot to mention it has a built-in OSD that uh, I, I like to fly with OSD because I like to know where my battery status is at at all times and I really don't want to burn stuff. Uh, to talk back to the radio, I'm going to be using the R6DM uh, radio link receiver. Uh, if you guys are, again, familiar with the last video build on the Doinker, it's the same one that I used. It is very small, it is S-Bus, and uh, so far it's worked pretty well for me. The only thing I'm a little bit worried is that it's not a dipole antenna, so I'm hoping that the lost range won't be too much of an issue. The other thing that the board came with, uh, the Pico, sorry, not the Pico, the Innova, it came with a little step-down regulator as well, which is quite neat. I'm not sure how I'm going to end up using this here, but I guess it's just to power the camera. So it's really, really tiny. It's even smaller than the Pololos that I've been using. And uh, if this is what they sent, this is what I'll use. Now, to power the build, uh, I'm going to be using the brand new DYS XSD, which is the 30 amp. Uh, ESCs by DYS and these ones are already built for D-Shot so you don't have to do any modifications to use the new protocol. Um, I've used the DYS 30 amps before on the 5 inch build and I'm very very happy with how these ESCs have performed. Uh, literally everything that I can throw at them no problem at all they don't even get that warm I have had no issues with the tuning and uh, I've even burnt a motor on this one and had no problems with the ESC at all. So I definitely trust the DYS stuff. And I'm pretty excited to see this uh, D-Shot, uh, see how that works. I haven't used it yet. I've been using Multi-Shot for the last little while. I've heard mixed reviews on D-Shot. Some people say that it makes no difference. Other people say that it's easier to tune. So I'm really curious to find out for myself. And I'll probably end up making a video just about the D-Shot procedure itself and how that turns out in the long run. Now, powering the build with the motor side, we have the Brother Hobby T1. And uh, these are 1407. 3600 kV motors and they have ridiculously strong magnets. You barely can free spin this motor. It almost feels like it's cogging. Do you see that? How I'm moving it little by little? These are some seriously strong motors. I know that these can output a lot of torque. So uh, from what I've heard and from what I've seen the Detroit multi-rotor guys flying three inches, um, three inch builds competing against guys flying five inch builds is that they can keep up no problem. There's tons of acceleration. There's tons of top end speed on these motors. I've actually even been warned to be careful on certain cheaper props because they might explode. So <laughs> I'll be careful and I'll keep them away from my eyes. So um, other than that, we're just going to be going with the standard HS1177 from Fox here for the video portion. Uh, I have it mounted with a 1.8 camera lens, which is what I've been using across all my builds now. I find that it gives me the most angle without, with the least amount of distortion compared even to the 2.1s. I find the 2.1s distort too much around the corners and you end up getting some blurring. And these ones here give you a perfectly flat image pretty much. And of course, we are going to be using dry drone on this entire build. Uh, I've been, I've, as I've said before, I really believe in this product. I've used it on all my other builds. I've been flying my Garuda and my 5 inch, my five inch uh, WP-17 in the snow, crashing it in the snow, and all I have to do is pick it up, and blow the snow off of it, put a new battery on, and go again. Nothing bad has happened to any of my builds since I've been using this, so I highly recommend it, and uh, we'll be going over how to apply it onto all the components when we actually get to the build. Um, other than that, really the last little bit is the Foxier antenna that I'm going to be using. This time I'm not going to mount it on the, under the arms because uh, the 3-inch arms are just a little bit too small and it's going to be a little bit ridiculous to have that thing there. So I'm going to just be mounting it on the top as per usual. Uh, I've come to really trust this, uh, this, top, um, this top antenna mount that they've developed. So I think that it will sustain, it will survive most crashes and it's easy to replace. Uh, can't cost more than a couple bucks to get one of these ones from the Detroit Multi-Rotor guys. So that pretty much covers it in terms of parts, guys. Uh, the next video, hopefully in a week or so, I will be doing the 
the build of the frame itself, uh, preparing the carbon fiber and um, setting the components up, seeing how they fit and uh, starting to cut the wires to, to trim. And then after that, we'll do a build video and a maiden and a review. So I hope you guys stick around. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of this awesome stuff coming down the pipes. And I'll see you guys next time.